what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to talk about halloween the missing years in this video here today this is going to be in relation to this screenplay that jake wade wall wrote i believe he discussed this with bloody disgusting four years ago at this point over four years ago at this point and it dived into a movie we could have gotten after resurrection that ultimately was a prequel but was decided against in favor of the actual direction we ended up going in which was rob zombies remake in 2007 so this is what mr wall had to say about that screenplay and what transpired in halloween the missing years so when chatting with bloody disgusting he said that halloween 3 was my inspiration we have halloween and halloween 2 and it's mike myers and it's Lori. halloween 3 comes out in theaters and it has nothing to do with any of them so then the franchise picks back up with halloween 4. for years i thought where was michael that year when we saw Season of the Witch, where did he go? So the whole concept of Halloween the Missing Years was the feeling where he was during Season of the Witch. That was the concept of how can we, for the diehard fans, tie Season of the Witch into the franchise. The concept was this. If Halloween is the night he came home, I started to think, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, that's one night he came home, but his real home was the asylum. That's where he really grew up. So the concept of the missing years was to begin the film by exploring a bit of his childhood in the asylum, which of course we see bits of this in the remake, and kind of fill in some of the pieces we didn't know about him. Like, why specifically that mask? And just kind of fill in some of the fun lore that came specifically from that institution. So then the concept would, would cut to the present when Season of the Witch is unfolding, I never did address it specifically, that film, but I filled in that there was a missing year that he didn't come home, so where did he go? He went to Smith's Grove. He went to his real home. He was returning back to what was essentially the place he grew up during his formative years. It was basically going to be him wreaking havoc on the asylum. I think there actually was a sequel that was written that never got made either, also set in an asylum that was supposed to be a sequel to Resurrection. It was a lot of fun. I thought it was an interesting, fun way for the Halloween nerds like me, the crazy fans, to tie it all in and still establish a new home for Mike, a new place for him to wreak havoc. Had The Missing Years been made and proved to be a success, would there have been, would there have a plan for a direct follow-up? More Missing Years to explore? He goes on to say, that was precisely what we continuously racked our brains over. One one school of thought was, oh, okay, we can now get four movies out of Mike Myers wreaking havoc in Smith's Grove. There was also talk of specifically ending Missing Years, where it completely lays the way for Halloween 4. There was talk to do it both ways. Since the script never got made, there's no way of knowing what would have been agreed upon. Now, he goes on to say, there have been an explanation as to what happened to him after the fiery conclusion of Halloween 2. Would he have gotten another Shatner mask or would he have been walking around maskless and burnt to a crisp? Now, Mr. Wall, as this article lays out, doesn't go into great detail as to the story specifics. He does note that Michael would have been the shape that we all know and love. He said he did get the same mask back. It was too iconic not to. But the Halloween, Halloween 2 ending was addressed and its fallout in this screenplay. Now, I could not find this script online. I think at one point it was online, but it has been scrubbed. If you are able to track this screen screenplay down online, please let me know. It says here, I took pieces, little sub characters, little beats, moments that never got addressed for those of us that are avid fans and brought or in thoughts. Here are the breadcrumbs. So for me, the breadcrumbs that we're going to explore in the asylum years were the loose ends and all the Halloweens that had been made up until that point. I wanted it to be a thread. It wasn't arbitrary. Oh, now we're going to do some asylum kills. I wanted to have compelling reason for Smith's Grove to be a home for him. At the end of two, when he's burnt and in need of real care, that's what switches the psyche off. He knows where he can actually get care, and that is his real home. I like that thought process. Now, he goes on to talk about Thor mythology, talking about how he didn't want to address that, but... He will say that in the script, we did play around with still going back to Haddonfield where everyone is like, oh God, it's going to happen again. And I also wanted to trick the audience into thinking, oh yes, it is, but oh no, they actually get a Halloween off. Ha everyone is pleasantly surprised while hell is wreaking havoc or hell is breaking loose in Smith's Grove. So without benefit of a thorn coat awaiting him at the asylum, why was it that an injured Michael felt compelled to return to Smith's Grove in this story? There was a nurse there, a registered nurse that he was very, very fond of. In the script, she was the one person that, for whatever reason, didn't treat him like a monster. Sounds very much so like the custodian 
character that we end up seeing in Rob Zombie's remake. So in the script, she was the one person that for whatever reason didn't treat him like a monster. She treated him like a human. He goes on to say, I thought that would be an interesting thing to play with, that there is something within him that can remember kindness. Like I said before, can someone be purely evil? That's the whole debate of a good horror film and of Myers. And I just thought if we were going to take the opportunity to fill in the missing year and fill in the other half of his psyche, I thought it would be interesting to play with. Could there be a bit of compassion in him? Now, as a fan, no. But in the movie, I want to play with that for a moment at least. He goes on to talk about how Loomis would have been involved in this. Loomis was in there, the EMT Jimmy from Halloween 2. I took any one of the films up until this point where they had been a survivor, where they played some part in these missing years. That may that maybe or maybe not led to how they survive or how they or why they survive, or it could have been arbitrary, but I wanted to play with that concept. So he goes on to talk about how this this film would have been an exercise of suspense, Michael Myers in an asylum. We're gonna fill in these missing gears and we're gonna we're going to fill in what else was important to him, what else shaped him. I thought would have give us an opportunity to make it more suspenseful. Sometimes in slasher films, they get redundant and it just becomes about the new clever death. Although I love those and I wanted a clever death, a couple of those in here. I thought it would give us an opportunity to lean into that approach and make it more suspenseful. Now, of course, we know that Dimension Films ultimately did not go with this. But my thoughts on this simply are that while I see the potential what I don't like about it is how he seems very confident about going into what makes Michael Myers tick. And I'm not saying it could have ended up being a good movie. It very well could have ended up being a good movie. That also goes completely against the whole intent of John Carpenter's original movie. He ended this interview by saying, I thought very firmly that there was more that made Michael Myers who he was. And I really wanted to get into that. Like I said, ultimately, we got shades of that in the remake that we got. We didn't really get well. It wasn't it wasn't spelt out to us through dialogue It was more so spelled out to us through a lot of disturbing imagery and a almost too long time spent with his childhood. You could argue with that remake, even though the remake, I would argue, is a decent film. There's just things about it still creatively that I wouldn't have done, such as the amount of time they spent diving into his childhood, even all the way to the build up of him killing Judith and then also spending all this time in Smith's Grove. I would have tampered that a bit and got gotten rid of some of that in the ultimate remake that we got but i definitely see bits and pieces of this that ended up making its way into rob zombies film the missing years could again have been a great film but executed poorly in certain ways when it comes to the creative decisions they're taking with michael myers and how they want to explore him what makes him tick etc why this mask all of that stuff which again is an aspect you can argue we saw in the rob zombie remake anyway but you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. Do you think the missing years of Halloween would have been a good movie? Why or why not? Or do you think that this concept is a good thing? It was not made because you don't like the idea of exploring Michael Myers way too much. And considering some of you already think that the Rob Zombie remake was trash for that, this probably doesn't sound any better. Let me know all that down below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications and miss a video in the description. I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.